Ten-year-old Libby doesn't have the strength to stand, so instead she shuffles. Once an active girl, she's now in constant pain and relies on a wheelchair to move around. For her, this is life with long COVID. Dizziness, constant headache, um, sometimes body aches, which are normally caused by things that I did the day before. I'm normally in bed a lot of the day, mostly with do dog. Um, I used to do trampolining, kayaking and just activities six or seven days a week. Um, and now I can't do any of them at all. What has been the hardest thing about all of this? Um, it's probably more the pain and loneliness. Just sat at home most of the time and then just annoyed because I can't do it, the things that I love. This was Libby just months before she caught COVID. Active, strong, happy and healthy. A year on and she can barely leave the house. She has missed months of school and nothing seems to make her better. It's, it's crazy how, how such a fit young girl can be so poorly. And, you know, I, I often wake up in the night um, to message from her saying, oh, I, I'm in so much pain, my back's hurting, my, my ankle's hurting, my finger's hurting. She has all these different aches at night time. Um, and it's really sad that I can't really be there to, to support her. Um, and she's sort of suffering in silence. So it is, um, it's, it's, it's a horrible condition. And, um, you know, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Long COVID affects everyone differently, but symptoms can include extreme fatigue, brain fog and headaches. It can also affect the heart and lungs, with many experiencing breathlessness. Muscle aches and joint pains are also common. During the height of the pandemic, there were repeated reassurances that COVID was not as serious for children. And whilst Libby's case is extreme, it is not unusual. According to the charity Long COVID Kids, there are currently more than 71,000 children across the UK living with Long COVID. I think we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. I think because of the lack of public um, health messaging, clear public health messaging on this, a lot of families won't know how to identify long COVID in children. And there's also um, a lot of challenges reported um, from families who try and seek help, but then the clinicians don't yet have that understanding. The Welsh Government says it's invested £10 million to help with the recovery of those suffering with the condition and where possible say children like Libby should be treated close to home. But there are currently no long Covid clinics in Wales and Libby and her family feel support has been lacking. Most of the doctors just don't know a lot about it so they can't do much. Because in England there's a few clinics for children in this, um, in Wales. There's a few for adults, but none, nothing for children. It's been a, a struggle. Um, I wonder if I wasn't so vocal, we wouldn't have had a lot of these tests. You know, I, find, I think we've had some tests because A, I've gone privately, or B, I've just been very bossy and haven't given, taken no for an answer. <laughs> Libby's condition has had a huge impact on family life. For now, they remain positive her condition will improve in time, but not knowing how long these symptoms will last is a very real fear for them all. Alexandra Hartley, ITV News, Penarth. Oh, I was very tired today.